This is Wandering Universe. In the last video, we went on a journey exploring the fascinating site of Gobekli Tepe. Today, I'm going to be exploring further into the structure of the building site, who built them, why they built them, and background facts into human evolution on development and discovery of tools. So, let's go exploring. Okay, here we are. This is the first map of the area, as I showed you in last video. Here's a black and white map of Gobekli Tepe, and it's not very far from Giza. How interesting. It's just a drop in the ocean, isn't it? Okay, and here's another map. This is the Haram Plain, and here it is. That's the sister site, and that's Gobekli Tepe. So, let's, in, let's, let's look into it. So what's interesting with this is the sister sites near Gobekli Tepe. For some reason, whoever built these structures franchised them into other nearby areas such as Karahan Tepe. Think of this as nearby suburbs or urban city area of the main capital city. Gobekli Tepe is not the only massive site built that has stood the test of time. There is another site, older and much larger, over here, Karahan Tepe. Now, it's been called the Temple of the Stars, so to speak. Karahan Tepe is situated roughly 35 kilometres east of the main site, nestled in the Tek Tek Mountains, located east of San Lufar in Turkey. Now, it covers an area of 325,000 square miles. It's been recently dug up to find this. Aha! Uh -huh. Buried T-shaped obelisks, all 250 of them with featured animal figures, sculptured and carved into the walls of each of them, such as a winding snake, a battered torso of a naked man, polished rock statues of goats, gazelles and rabbits to name a few. So here's another one there. The planned excavation might show that Karahan Tepe is far older than its younger sister site. Okay, here's another one that they've um, discovered. This is the actual site. So as you can see, there's a lot of topsoil that has buried um, a lot of um, a lot of interesting artifacts underneath it, and it must have taken a lot, long time to actually um, dig this up. So that's very interesting. Now, the fact that Gobek Gobekli Tepe is not the only unique site, there are others similar in design and architecture that are around 125 miles apart from each other. Some archaeologists and historians pinpoint Karan, Karahan Tepe as older than 12,000 years. Uh, but Hatun um, Selik, a Turkish archaeologist, dated it to be somewhere between 9,500 to 9,000 BC. So that's very interesting. So here are more pictures. Here are more um, stone pillar obelisks they found. Here's another T-shape obelisk right here. Very similar to the one in um, Gobekli. There might be some um, artwork carved into the stones. They're still working on that one. And here are, and this is a stone tool. Now I'm going to get into this right now. Now, human evolution through discovery and development of stone tools um, goes back through um, Stone Age. Now Stone Age began about 2.6 million years ago and it finished around 5,000 years ago. So this is one of the stone tools they found in Africa, as you can see. And now we're going to get into the Bronze Age. Now that began um, around 3,300 BC and it finished around 1,200 BC. So it's pretty recent. This is what we've discovered and this is the technology we've developed to create these tools um, to make life easy, well, not easier, but a little bit easier for us um, instead of really um, back-breaking work. Um, 
Here's another picture of, these are actual warrior bronze tools. Um, I think they come from somewhere in Europe. I'm not too sure, um, but this is what they've um, made here. And um, yes, as you can see on display. Now the Iron Age, I'll show you about the Iron Age. That began um, around 1200 BC and it finished around 600 BC. So it's not very old, it's only quite recent. Um, so this is one of the earlier tools. As you can see, that's a pickaxe. One of them's um, something to do with gathering, um, say for example, cro uh, crops like hay um, or sugarcane. Um, if you're from Queensland, you would know about that. Um, that would be a hammer. One of them's a chisel. So it's very interesting, um, these tools. Here's another one. This is a bit more recent. Um, so these are more um, tools to chisel and to stones. Um, they were better and more robust than bronze tools. Um, bronze tools broke very easily, um, especially through wear and tear over time. And this is the Bronze Age um before the iron age um a, a depiction of us yes um cladded humans um very primitive um but discovering and using a technology that had that we have taken advantage of um especially for you know um bad purposes so um this is how far we've come um through um discovering and developing technology through the ages and this is where we are today as you know so this is a petroglyph of um a rock painting from the mojave desert um i find this very interesting actually actually now these could depict um the actual clan um of the mojave people um in their headdress and their you know um their best in their um in their gear and they look like they'd be doing some sort of ceremonial dance i'd say it's depicting some sort of story um that, hap um, that happened around the time now this is about i think forty thousand years old correct me if i'm wrong it could be fifteen thousand twenty thousand i'm not sure but that's really interesting there okay now we're going to go back to um go beckley so Hunter-gatherers didn't have the ability to lift, carry, and tow for hundreds of miles incredibly heavy quarried stones to these sites. Now, I'll show you an example. Here it is here. Now, they didn't have the technology nor the means to develop effective tools to chisel, drill, hammer, and crane the stones with such precision as I've shown you in the examples. Um, they would have had the tools that we're using today that they used back then. So think about that for a moment. Now, the development of agriculture was taking place around 14,000 to 12,000 years ago after the ice began to melt. Thus, the Fertile Crescent was showing signs of abundance of life on dry land. This means that after the Younger Dryas period, although there was a drought, the ice began to melt away that gave rise to the development of farming okay so once again i'll go back to the tools as you can see here these tools that we used i think these tools around the iron age were far more effective in farming practices than um, using bronze tools um, once again bronze as you can see through um, overuse they can wear out over time and you have to keep um, um, recreating them and um, you have to keep supplying the farmers with more um, um, replicated tools otherwise um, yeah you can't um, sufficiently run your farming business so what happened after the ice began to melt so we'll go back to the aerial view of Go, go Beckley Tepe and we'll have a look at other um, pictures okay so hunter-gatherers soon left their bow and bows, spears and arrows behind for a more cozy settled existence and turned to farming. This has formed Neolithic cultures that developed a means of living a settled life of cultivating and planting domesticated crops 
and breeding farms of captive animals. So um, not a very um, pleasurable um, profession, may I ask. Um, to build this monument in Kar Karahan and Gopekli Tepe with such precision and accuracy, one can only imagine the feat it took to manoeuvre each quarried stone many miles to its current destinations, right? And here's an example. Now, to build this monument, I'm going to go back to the previous um, picture here. To build this monument in um, um, Karahan and Gobekli Tepe with such precision and accuracy, one can only imagine the feat it took to manoeuvre each quarried stone many miles to its current destinations. Till this day, no hunting tools and no agricultural tools of any kind were ever found. Not even um, skeletal remains of any type were found. I am highly sceptical of the recent news in mainstream media that the so-called skeletons, such as a skull, um, were found at Gobekli Tepe. So, I'll have a look here. Um, here we go. So, that looks too good to be true, don't you think? I mean, it looks very fresh. It hasn't aged um, through um, um, the changes of time. And the teeth look a bit too pearly white. They look too good. I mean, I don't see any signs of tooth decay or missing teeth. Um, Hunter-gatherers, believe me, didn't have very good um, teeth. I mean, there was no dent dental practices back then, only until recent times with um, modern technology of um, from um, Iron Age tools that we developed techniques to actually really look after our teeth. But back then, I don't think we did. And this looks a bit too white, okay? I don't think this skull has really aged very much. It just looks quite recent, maybe a thousand, two thousand years old, but I doubt it. It's 12,000 or 20,000 years old. The color would be quite gray or a darkish gray. That's what you would see. So I have to put BS on that one, okay? So. Till this day, no hunting tools and agricultural tools of any kind were ever found. Now, to trek great distances on foot without a vehicle or proper infrastructure to access these neighbourhoods were impossible around hunter-gatherer times. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Here um, is Lake Turkana in Kenya. Now, in this lake... They found this. They found um, a first stone tool and it's dated around 3.3 million years old. Okay, very interesting. Here's another one. This is a stone hammer um, found in China. So it's roughly similar in age as the one in um, Kenya. And this is a stone axe head found in India. So it's roughly around the same age as the one in Kenya. Okay, now, guess who built these tools? Okay, guess who made them? Yes! Oh boy, we weren't that um, very attractive back then, weren't we? I mean, I guess we had different tastes um, in finding a mate, similar to how we looked back then. I mean, <laughs> I mean today we're, you know, um, pretty hairless compared to how we were back then, and that's how we made tools. It's not like we had huge brains in order to develop um, more advanced tools. And I'll get back, get into that in a moment. And have a look at this. Ah, uh, yes. Um, this is Lucy. So I'm not too sure if um, our brain capacity um, was capable of making such advanced tools in order to create such wonderful feats of engineering. So this is what we looked like back then. I mean, not so attractive, weren't we? Yes, not someone you'd want to hook up married at first sight. But check these babies out. Yes, have a look at these people. So compared to these people, it is said that it was them that um, built um, Gobekli Tepe and nearby sites. 
They came from another world in the universe around the Ice Age when the climate was ripe and fertile. These beings would have had vast, high, advanced knowledge to excavate, design, construct, and artistically create such a feat of engineering. In other words, these sites were not merely, uh, merely decorative superstitious purposes. I believe it was, well, let's see. Okay, let's see what I think. All right, I'm going to find that aerial view. Here we go. I believe it was a museum. It was some sort of college or some sort of education center. Okay, um, they could have been talking about the evolution of life on Earth and where they came from, especially when you see the um, carved um, artwork of various animals on display not the ones that you see in today's museums where they're in a glass cabinet um so maybe what they've left behind was just a teaser before the big reveal hmm so let me just show you so compare us okay yeah and compare them so who's got the brains okay now going to show you something else think about this for a sec regardless of what some archaeologists academics and scientists mainstream beliefs interpretations or faux examinations of the sites it's far from it what i've been taught in high school always ties to the same force-fitting monotonous theory it's a religious temple hmm what's the agenda with that does it always have to conclude to be the one final answer and none other? I bet they used it as a blatant excuse to keep us idiots in the dark. <laughs> Give me a break. Everything I was taught in high school, well, well, since high school, has been a total sham to the point I've stopped believing every word those crony teachers preached about this. Some of these contemporary and often fake views need to be urgently rewritten to put an end to this superstitious theory nonsense and I think you probably would agree. Now, if you want to find out more about um, Karahan Tepe, go to sailingstonetravel.com um, look up Kara, Karahan Tepe and you'll see some very interesting photos um, more in depth about the site itself. Um, so we're going to go back to Gobekli Tepe. Now this is a um, satellite map from above and as you can see that's the area and this used to be a lake. There was a very very big big lake that surrounded the site. How interesting. Here's another one sitting on a um, hill some sort of mount, mountain range hill okay so i reckon around the ice age time there would have been a forest um that was very vast and the area was very abundant with um life so that's very interesting now this stone that's got this drilled hole in is facing true north so um, it's linked to some sort of star date calendar system in the night sky. Now, have a look at this precisely drilled hole, okay? Now I'm gonna show you the tools that we use today to do such accuracy, okay? Such precise drilled holes into the ground, into concrete rocks and other things. I'll show you. Now this is a claw drilling tool okay this goes into rock okay as you can see it's a beast of a tool here's another one this is a gas line um drilling um diamond blade um tool i think this is used to drill um holes um to put gas pipelines through something like that so that's very interesting and um, I'll get to another one in a sec, but have a look, the tools that we use here to do this. Now look how precise that was. 
What's interesting is that this was done between 14,000, 12,000 years ago using these tools that we are using today. Not back then, today. So think about it. I mean, look at the stools that we used back then, right? Right? In, in this climate, in this environment, right? Look at the tools we used back then. Not very accurate. Look how we did it, how we made them. And look at um, the modern tools we use today, not back then. Think about it, especially this, okay? To create this. All right, now here's another map that apparently is linked to a star date system in the night sky at Gobekli Tepe. Some believe that Karahan Tepe is also similar um, in its structure, but um, you can research more about that online. Now, here's something else um, very, that's um, interesting and creepy. <laughs> something you see on Slap Tan um, or one of those, you know, horror films. Um, yes. Um, gee, she looks... She's got that resting bitch face. Um, yes. Not something I'd stare at for very long, especially in an art museum. Okay. I'm going to show you something else before I um, finish this video. I'm going to show you something. It's going to um, really um, pique your imagination. Here we go. Now, this person is a, I think it's called a Dikshikta Brahman from um, the, I think it's called Kanika tribe in southern India. Have a look at this. Now I'm going to show you something else. This is going to blow your mind a bit. Okay, see that? Now, have a look at the um, body paint on this um, indigenous um, shaman. He's a medicine man. And have a look at him. Very similar. See the lines across his chest and on the top of his left shoulder and also across his forehead. And look at his facial features. Hmm. Makes you think, doesn't it? And compared to him, look at that. And look at this. See this N shape and U shape and uh, a bar across it in the middle. Look at this. This is at Gobekli. And once again, very similar. Is this picture telling us that these people knew who built Gobekli, Karahan Tepe, the pyramids? Do these people know something that we don't? I find this incredibly fascinating. I think they do, but they're not going to give their little secrets away just yet. We're going to have to earn it before we understand this knowledge thoroughly. But they're, they're onto something. I know it. They're definitely onto something. And I'm going to give you another one. This is going to freak you out a little bit, but it does correlate to what I've been talking about. This is one of the um, rock art paintings in the Northern Territory. I'm not sure where um, it's famous. And as you can see, the um, tribes up there knew about these people. Hmm. They knew who they were and they knew where they came from. And somehow these people passed on their knowledge to them. First, up in the Northern Hemisphere and then to the Southern Hemisphere. I believe these people are related, very much so. And I believe this tribe and this tribe know something about this that we haven't still got our finger on yet. Now, 
This looks like a helmet. This looks like eye goggles or sunglasses. And this looks like some sort of um, astronaut suit. Okay, not the baby jumpsuits of today that you see on board the um, NASA space shuttle. I mean, pathetic. Um, these would have been more like skin tight to handle pressure, air pressure. But they knew something. They really knew something. So I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to show you this. This is really, really fascinating. And I'm going to show you one more picture. Going back to who they were. Okay. Mm. Think about that. These are the hidden mysteries at Gobekli Tepe. And us humans, we have a very long way to go. We're not even close to those who have been here before us. We've barely scratched the surface on the buried secrets yet to be revealed within these fascinating structures. In time, we'll eventually accept the answers from those who have already explored in great depth, thanks to life experiences, the true nature of the human mind. Going far beyond our primal instincts that has conquered our judgment on what we think is best for our existence for way too long. It's time to stop making those stupid mistakes that us humans have made for hundreds and thousands of years developed through social structures that enabled us to invade, conquer and destroy what's in our path for one thing to be leader of the pack. Clans, tribes, groups, kingdoms, and empires sparked by the discovery of technology we've passed through the ages have done next to nothing to relieve pain, suffering, and misery brought on by our own need to rule the world for one purpose only, breed. And yet, we are all still feeling empty and unhappy. How breeding got it so wrong for us. That's all for now.